Got a very Catholic family. Anyone else grow up Catholic? Yeah, you see that? You see that in our Catholic people, that energy where it's just like, yeah, that's why I'm a therapist. <laughs> so I have a therapist. <laughs> and, when we, and when we started, uh, I remember he was like, is there uh, anything during our time together that you want to focus on? And I'm like, yeah. As a kid, I had a whole lot of Jesus and guilt just crammed right up here. He's like, okay, okay, we can work on that. Was it crammed anywhere else? <laughs> uh, it's my parents' least favorite joke. Uh, yeah, it was funny. Uh, watching football with my dad today. Uh, I don't know if you guys are big football fans, but they, they were talking a lot about John Madden and uh, the Traducan, which is a, a duck stuffed into a chicken, stuffed into a turkey. Yeah, American ingenuity. Who needs cloning? <laughs> shove them into each other. <laughs> but my dad, he, he can never say anything right. Like, my dad calls, you know the basketball player, Allen Iverson? He calls him Alvin Iverson. <laughs> so he doesn't need two Bs. Uh, but he's like, oh, yeah, I wonder if they're going to have a Tredunkin. <laughs> I'm like, Dad, uh, that is what Michael Jordan would do when he would dunk past the three-point line and try dunk it, right? <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, that one, all right, that's what happens when you come up with uh, Thanksgiving jokes. <laughs> uh, sorry if I freeze, I have a, uh, well, as the pharmaceutical companies would call it, moderate to severe ADHD. <laughs> uh, I don't think my Adderall's kicked in yet. I was trying to take it before shows, so if you're like, do comics take performance enhancing drugs? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy though because uh, it was really hard to get it. My wife is a travel nurse. That's I've been in Wisconsin for a few months, and uh, yeah. thank you. Yeah, she she's a she's a dedicated mercenary healthcare worker, <laughs> and I'm a stay-at-home dog dad. She goes and makes all the money and takes care of me because I'm a feminist. <laughs> Uh, but it was really hard because I, I, uh, I'd run out of meds, so I needed to get a, a licensed Wisconsin provider. And uh, there's basically like an app where you can do free video and you fill out your medical profile, you pick a doctor, pick an appointment, and hope that they want to see you. <laughs> and after the third doctor said no, I was like, this is just Tinder all over again. <laughs> Uh, but don't worry, I'm, uh, it is, it is the time of year. Does anyone have seasonal saddies, the winter depressions? Yeah, there you go. You're medicated then, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> now you just get drunk and go to comedy shows. <laughs> yeah, I'd start by lunch. Uh, that's how mine started. I, uh, I went and, uh, it started seasonal until it turned, uh, all of the seasons. <laughs> Uh, but at first, at first, did anyone have to get a UV treatment and, and get sunburned? No, just this two German fella? Awesome. Yeah, I know I'm too German because my mom sent away to Ancestor and came back. They're like, your bratwurst, come to life. <laughs> yeah, I've got the invisible eyebrows to where I'm not allowed to have opinions about Israel-Palestine. I get it. <laughs> uh... Honestly, I think a lot of people are like good with that. They're like, we've heard too many opinions. Um, but uh, no, it was, uh, really, it wasn't until uh, my, my depression had gotten a little out of control. It wasn't until the pandemic that I really got it real treated. Uh, because one of the hardest things if you have mental health problems is actually going to get help. Luckily, everything was inside and on the video and... I mean, doing it on the couch, wearing a shirt, no pants, Winnie the Pooh in it is the easiest thing. <laughs> Look, if you're not Winnie the Pooh in it, you're not sad enough to get a doctor, okay? <laughs> uh, but, but I had to take a, do an intake. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's basically a brief survey that they give you to find out how broken your brain is. Uh, but since it was telehealth, this woman's reading to me, and she's like, in the last 30 days, have you wanted to harm yourself? Or if you don't speed this up, I will kill myself in the next 30 seconds. 
So at the end, she's like, well, you don't have any anxiety. I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty chill. I probably should use some though, right? <laughs> Maybe I could make some money once in a while. Uh, but she's like, you do have major depression. And I was like, did you have to give it an adjective? <laughs> I don't need to win some sad contest I didn't know I had to enter. <laughs> And she's like, oh no, we do. <laughs> did you guys know depression is the only place on earth where major outranks general? <laughs> So, uh, all of you general saddies, get down and give me 20 cries. <laughs> I'm in charge here. And then when I got my psychiatrist, they were uh, going over medication. They're like, kid, you're so good at this, you can skip the minors and go straight to the Lexapros. <laughs> uh, they also put me on Wellbutrin. Uh, yeah. Well, they, they put me on that because for some people, uh, Lexapro will cause sexual side effects. Uh, so the Wellbutrin is supposed to offset that. It took a while to hit, and uh, it was before I met my wife, and basically I was dating a lot, you know, Tinder all over again. And I just remember, like, if I ended up going back with somebody, I'd just be like, look, you tell me when you're done. Uh, so I was a hit. Um, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, my dad, when I told him that, he was like, oh, I took, uh, Wellbutrin, uh, back in the 90s to help me quit smoking. Yeah, that's what Wellbutrin was originally, uh, <laughs> meant to do. And then they were like, well, it doesn't help people quit smoking. What do we do? I don't know. Sell it to sad people. They don't know if it's working or not. We can bill them. <laughs> American healthcare. It's, uh... <laughs> oh, man, those drug company commercials are hilarious, too, because... <laughs> They're always like, do not take Skyrizzy if you were allergic to Skyrizzy. How the hell do I know that? <laughs> or uh, I can't remember the drug now, but it's like, if you have moderate to severe Crohn's. And I was like, I don't think anyone with Crohn's describes it as moderate to severe. They're just like, I'm going to be in the bathroom for a while. <laughs> uh, but uh, I was a Catholic kid, uh, and... Um, they were always telling us all these things, but the one that got me when I was younger was uh, Jesus was just like you. You get that, other Catholic school kids? Yeah, we can't all be Jesus. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it made me feel good. I was like, yeah. Until I went to the pool and got a real bad sunburn. I was like, now wait a minute. If I had spent 40 days in a desert, melanoma would have gotten me before the Romans. Jesus was a white man, that book's a lot shorter. <laughs> but uh, it was cool, I always used to like daydream like if Jesus was my best friend. Could you imagine how awesome that would be to go on spring break with the J dude? <laughs> like, I mean, he's already beach ready, he's got awesome hair, rocking abs, he's got the flippies on, we're ready to go. <laughs> and yeah, we showed up with not enough beer that day, we only brought a couple of six packs. But somehow, the whole beach got drunk. <laughs> and then when I passed out, he carried me back to the hotel. And that's why there was only one set of footprints in the sand. <laughs> uh, I also had a Catholic school sex education, so uh, I clearly had to find some information from other sources. Uh, and I got my direction from... What probably is not a very usual thing, it was three dudes from West Philadelphia. Sean, Nate, and Wanye. Boys to men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know it doesn't look like it, but uh, I'm a little older than I should be because, um, look, when you don't have kids or any success, it's great for your skin. <laughs> And uh, I remember in, in 1996, Boys to Men 2 came out. And now my mom wouldn't let me have anything with explicit lyrics warning on it. But I did get 57 minutes and 37 seconds of straight fuck jams that day came out. <laughs> and specifically, the one that taught me the most was track eight, I'll Make Love to You. You guys remember that one? Yeah. I'll make love to you. That's right, I have a heavenly voice. Like you want me to, and I'll hold you tight. 
Baby, all through the night, I'll make love to you. I know, I'm so good. <laughs> and you want me to, and I will not let go till you tell me to. And that is so important because I'll make love to you until you tell me to. That's consent. <laughs> and I'll hold you all through the night. That taught me, look, it's not just about the act and you're done when you finish. You gotta hold them and form intimacy. And I forgot the third one. <laughs> Crack! Uh, nope, Adderall not there for me today. Uh, dang it. I'm gonna be super wired after my set. Uh, <laughs> But uh, it was also the same for my sister. She took a lot longer, but uh, she got married and uh, knocked up her wife. Oh. Yeah, or, I don't know, Catholic sex ed. I said that one time and a woman laughed, she's like, ha <laughs> Jesus, and I was like, it could have been. <laughs> no, I, I know now it's, uh, you too can have an immaculate conception for $12,000. <laughs> And they ended up having twins, so they got to buy one, get one free baby. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, I think I'm running out of time. So I, wanna, I, I do want to close on this. Um, I love my wife, and when I met her, she works in children's hospitals. So uh, when we met, she said she doesn't want to have kids because, you know, don't take your work home with you, right? So uh, I went and did something for her birthday. And then the whole Supreme Court thing happened, so I think it's a great time for all of us, as a country, to come together and let's talk about balls, baby. <laughs> Is he singing again? I am. Let's talk about vasectomies. <laughs> let's talk about all the good things that can happen except buddy peace. <laughs> Hell yeah, with my clip crew or my stick soldiers in here. <laughs> Anyone? Do you guys know what's Price is Right? You got spay and neuter. <laughs> uh, look, I know, I know it's always a hard sell. Carol the Country telling this joke, and that's about the same percentage of guys around. Usually there's one, but you guys, okay. You're a young crowd. You're still hot and stupid. Uh, <laughs> but I know when I say it, there's a lot of guys like, mm -mm, not my boys, I'll just wear a condom. But look, Cooper, we know you're not gonna do it, okay? <laughs> and sure, I'm not ripped for her pleasure, but I'm snipped for her peace of mind. <laughs> and that's so much better, because it's guilt-free. And honestly, it was the easiest thing I ever did. I drove myself there, took 20 minutes, and drove myself home. And sure, I had to ice for the next two days, <laughs> but like Jesus in April, on that third day, it rose again, baby! <laughs> <laughs> and I get it, it's, it's really hard to convince people to do this when we still live in a country where trucks have nuts. <laughs> so I'd like to make you an offer. If anyone cuts a truck nut set off and breaks it to me, I will do your vasectomy. <laughs> Perform it myself. I just don't understand truck culture. <laughs> they all know trucks are ladies, right? They're V8s, that's eight vaginas. <laughs> you look at an engine block from the side, it's shaped like a uterus. <laughs> I don't know, maybe actually I've got it all wrong and these are the most progressive people we have. They're just like, look, Petunia, I know Ford sent you out as a lady, but I'm gonna set, a, set nuts up here, let you choose who you wanna be. Cause I'm on a mission, I'm on a trans mission. <laughs> Uh, all right, guys, I'm gonna leave you with this. If you're happy and you know it, get a vasectomy. If you're sad and don't wanna pass it on, get a vasectomy. If you believe in climate change or can't drive in a lane, time to get a vasectomy. Thank you guys, remember, it's not just vasectomy, it's vasectomy you too.